Hi, it's Handy Bow. In this video, I'll be showing you how to properly check all the fluids in your car. I'll be checking the levels for engine coolant, power steering fluid, brake fluids, oil levels, and transmission levels. I'll give you helpful hints and additional commentary on each fluid. Keeping these fluids at their proper level and specifications will mean your car will last longer and be safer on the road too. Checking fluids isn't as simple as it appears, as depending on the fluid, the car may need to be cool, warm, running, etc. They don't make it easy for you, so follow me and I'll try to keep it as easy and straightforward as possible. The car that I'll be doing this test on is the Mercedes-Benz R129 SL and is applicable to all R129s, but this video will also apply to many of the Mercedes-Benz, like the R107, the W126, and the W140, to name a few, but it's also applicable to more modern cars, like my Ford Fusion and Audi A3, and I'll bring the, these cars into the video too. So let's get to it. The first is to check the coolant level. The coolant reservoir is where we check it. So we're going to check the level and the color of the fluid. Both are very important. The coolant protects our engine from overheating and if you neglect it, it will likely lead to very costly engine repairs like head gasket repairs or an engine rebuild. It's extremely dangerous to check the coolant while the car is warm. So you'll want to check it early in the morning or when the car hasn't started for many hours. Check and feel that it is cool. If it's warm, don't do it because it's not safe. This car hasn't run for over 12 hours so I know it's safe to do so. I'll still be wearing protective eyewear as the system always has some kind of pressure in it. In this case, it kind of gives you a little bit of a hint, 140. The coolant level for the R129 should be here. But because of the discoloration of the reservoir, it's hard to tell. So let's open it. You're going to want to press down and spin. And you could maybe hear some kind of pressure letting out. So can you hear it? So it needs to be at that line in there. So mine is, maybe there's a slightly different angle right here. Next you're going to want to check the color and the color will depend on what was used and you may not know, but coolant colors are usually very vibrant. Mine here is an aqua bluish green, it actually looks a little more green here. So you want to make sure that it is not discolored and turning brownish. So as you can tell from mine, it clearly isn't. And if it is turning brownish, that's a sign of corrosion in your coolant system. But it also could mean that it's being mixed in with your engine oil because of some kind of gasket failure. Or if it's low, you know, you could obviously top it up. And you could use some generic type or a press stone in this case that's m meant for all vehicles to top it up. However, you're always going to want to make sure that you're putting like for like or similar color fluid into the coolant reservoir. But the real question is, why is it low? Are you losing it somewhere? Is there a leak in any of the hoses? So you're going to want to do some kind of visual check. On your dash, it will also signal if you are low on coolant fluid, and that's the symbol in the Mercedes. We're using the Ford, and they do make it a little bit easier for you, right? Here's the coolant reservoir. They obviously put a number of, you know, warning signs on it, and they make it easier here. They kind of give you a code fill range, and if you can tell, mine is at the bottom there of the code fill range, which is appropriate. Ford color is also some kind of aqua greenish color. Here on the Audi A3, here's the coolant. You can see it's a bright pink, and you can actually see it from over there. It's got a minimum and a maximum, and we're right there at the maximum. Mercedes recommends changing the coolant level every three years, and each car will have their own specifications, so check with the owner's manual. Next, let's check the brake fluid. This is a bit easier. Now, most car fluids are bad, but brake fluid is the worst of the worst. It can eat right through your paint, so be careful. Luckily, checking its fluid level is relatively straightforward. So this reservoir, be very careful about it, actually has a line. It's very difficult to see. Hopefully you can see that line being split over there. Kind of comes up like that. And it's meant to split the reservoir between the front side of the brakes and the rear side of the brakes. Okay, so if you're filling it up, so the rear sides are having a problem, it's kind of a safety feature. If the rear problems, rear brakes are having a problem, you won't lose control of the front brakes. Now, you could also see here you've got a minimum line, hopefully you could see that, and you've got a maximum line. Now, in this case, the fluid level is right 
kind of in between the min and the maximum, so we're safe. And we have on the front, and we also have some in the back there. So in that case, the fluid level checks out quite nicely. And now if you actually read the cap over here, it'll tell you that it recommends DOT4. Now, brake fluid comes in many different variations. Those are just specifications, and it suggests or recommends uh, that you use DOT4. If you notice that it's lower than the minimum, then you've got a serious problem with safety. So you're going to want to. So you're going to need to figure out why you have low brake fluid. Can there be a leak somewhere in your brake lines? Now this car has obviously four brake lines, one going to each tire. So you're going to want to check out. Have you noticed any leaks? You can also lose fluid or brake fluid if your brake booster, which is back here, isn't working properly. And somehow the fluid is going from here and getting caught in there. So it's really important to make these checks. As brake pads wear down, the brake fluid goes further and further into the brake caliper. So that's a reason why we have a low and a high range. So some movement towards the low end is reasonable as brake pads wear down. Brake fluids also come in different colors. As you can tell, this one comes in a I'm going to open up the cap here, and you've got to be very careful here as well. You don't want to introduce any contaminants into the reservoir here. And if you kind of get yourself peek in there, it's kind of got a bluish tinge. A further check is trying to check out the actual condition of the brake fluid. Now in this case, for this Mercedes, it's awfully difficult because you've got a screen in there, so you can't really tell the condition of the brake fluid. But here in my Ford Fusion, you can actually take a peek in here and if you actually come in from this side you could sort of see it in this case it's got a yellow tinge but if you actually look closely in there it's not necessarily perfectly clear which means there is some kind of contamination here that or that this brake fluid has seen better days so it could have become contaminated because of rusty brake lines or times when the calipers get overheated especially depending on how long the brake pads have been on when was the caliper last uh, last service could actually be introducing some contaminants into the brake fluid so you may want to check that out now in this case for this car my Ford Fusion I will be bleeding the brakes shortly on the Audi A3 the brake reservoir a little bit tricky to find but you'll find it there it's got the universal symbol for brakes and you can sort of see the brake booster back there the big round piece and the min the maximums you've got a kind of just find your way through there and you can kind of see a min and a max there. So it's very much possible to do so as well. Brakes work best with fresh brake fluids and brake fluid deteriorates over time and so will your braking power just by regular usage of the brakes. So Mercedes recommends changing the brake fluid every two years and preferably in the spring. Your dash will also highlight and here are some of the codes that it has for your brakes. Next, let's check the power steering fluid. I have a video on how to replace the power steering fluid. This is an easy one to check its level. So it's located here on the right side of the engine. And in this case, this is the reservoir. In this case, you're just going to kind of unscrew this. And once you've got the cap off, and again, you're going to go in here, and you're going to want to look in there for clarity, color, as well as level. Now in this case, I recently did it, so if you, as you could tell, it's awfully, awfully clear in there. And you could tell the dipstick there has got maximums and minimums, and you could see we're kind of like just a little bit below the maximum, uh, actually somewhere in the middle between the minimum and the maximum, so we're actually in good shape there. If your level is low, obviously you could obviously top it off. And if it's actually quite dirty or unclear, then that means it's time to replace it. Now, Mercedes actually recommends, I think it's something like, uh, I necessarily recommend years. I think it's, it's three years or 50 to 60,000 kilometers. Next, let's move on to the automatic transmission fluid. It's located here for, all, for most of the R129s, even though some of the um, maybe 500 SLs may have the bigger engine uh, compartment or the engine, uh, it's typically located here. Okay, now, the transmission in any car is very sensitive, so you don't want to introduce any type of contaminants into the system. 
So you need a clear, lint-free cloth for this. Now the other thing to know is that automatic transmission needs to be checked while the car has been in idle for about two minutes. And before that, the car must have reached normal operating temperature. So if I check it now while the car is cold, it will give me the wrong reading. So at this point, I'm gonna take the car for a short drive and ensure we see the oil temperature reach at least 80 degrees Celsius or 176 degrees Fahrenheit if, you're, if you've got Fahrenheit. We got the car in operating temperature. It's actually a bit above 80, which is perfectly fine. And now we're just gonna park it and have it in idle for a couple of minutes. All right, so I've got the car in park. We're gonna leave it there for about two minutes with the engine on, and then we're gonna go check the fluid level for the automatic transmission. Got a very clean microfiber lint-free rag. Very important to be lint-free. Right, it's got a little bit of a here. It's got a little bit of a. You kind of just gotta pop it up like that. See that? And it should just come out. Okay, so we're gonna take it out right now. We're gonna wipe it, and then we're gonna take it. I'm gonna put it back in. It's very similar to how you change oil. You can tell it's red. You know, it's, and automatic transmission fluid it typically is red and that looks like it's a nice vibrant red so it looks healthy and let's just ensure that the level is appropriate right now so we're going to put it in we're going to put it all the way in all the way in all the way in and then pull it out let's see where we stand here okay and it is ideal that you get it within that range you can sort of see those two pieces right there. I'm a little bit kind of right at the very, very tip of the maximum, which is perfectly fine. So this looks good. So you've got a couple of issues here. So, you know, if you're very much at the far end of the maximum, then you've got a problem. You've got to take some out. And then if you can tell, it's very, it's a very, very tiny amount right there. And if you're too low, then you've got an issue as well. You may need to add some, but again, Anytime you're adding some, you gotta, you gotta make sure you know why you're adding some or what's happening to it, okay? But in this case, it looks good and the color looks reasonably well, and it should. It's been, uh, it's been recently changed. So here's the Ford, it's very similar. The uh, transmission fluid, they're a little bit more uh, transparent, calling it transmission fluid, and they tell you what type of transmission to use. Well, for changing automatic transmission is not straightforward and especially for older cars. If you've been changing it every few years, then you continue to do so. There's been a lot written about how changing all your transmission fluid can cause problems with the transmission. So I won't speak more about it as it's a whole video by itself. Last but not least is the engine oil. It too has a process for checking. The car needs to have reached operating temperature and then have its engine turned off and you wait for about two minutes, then check the level. All right, so let's do that. For the M104 engine that's in this R129, as well as many other Mercedes, uh, Mercedes had, has a bulletin that they sent out a number of years ago, recommend that these engines not get their oil levels set to the maximum, but closer to the mid-range of the dipstick. And this is, uh, the reason why they have this is to prevent premature head gasket failure. It might be on the M103 and not something of a concern on the, uh, on the SL500s. Okay, so the two minutes are up here. So again, we're gonna take it out here, okay? Um, obviously the engine is off at this point and it's been off for two minutes. And again, the goal here, as you could sort of see here, if you could kind of make its way, it's got a min and it tells you there are min and a max, and you want to be kind of in there. Let's just see. I'm going to stick it all the way in, and then we're going to stick it, take it out. And if you could tell there, hopefully you could tell, I'm kind of at the midpoint of the range. So I'm happy with that. And the color of the oil, now this is tricky as well. Now, I know what I've put in there, and that still to me is fresh oil, but depends on the type of oil you've got. Some are, some are dark, some are, some are lighter, so it's hard, to, uh, it's hard to gauge. What are the main fluids that I've checked in the Mercedes, and obviously you know, applicable to Ford and, and, and Audi, et cetera. Uh, some Mercedes also have hydraulic suspensions, so there'll be a fluid that you'll need to check there as well. And obviously with the convertibles, you've got the hydraulic 
tank is in the trunk of the car and I won't be getting to that at this point. And so that's it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my Handy Val channel as I will be posting many more R129 videos. And you can also check my channel for my many other Mercedes R129 videos that have already been posted. Thanks for watching Handy Val. Bye for now.